Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Search Podcast, the US edition. I'm Elliot Manning, Managing Director of Cayman Recruitment UK and US. Um, today, I've got a guest who's been on probably 30, 40 episodes ago. At that point, um, he never had, uh, and the business rather, never had a setup in the US, which has massively changed. But Scott from Forsyth Barnes, I'll let you uh, do an introduction and tell the audience a little bit about I suppose, where you are right now. Thanks for having me, first of all, Elliot. Um, good to connect again. Um, so I'm Scott Parsons, managing partner of Foresight Farms. Uh, we're a senior to exec uh, talent partner. And we mainly help companies in the fast growth tech area. So e-tail, fintech are our main two sectors. Uh, and then we also have a sports business as well, um, which is pretty cool, providing senior execs into the sporting industry. Fantastic. So how what, you're in New York City. You, you're not in, are you anywhere else in the States or just in, in New York? Just New York at the minute. Next stop for us will be West Coast, but just New York at the minute. Off is right. At what point did you decide New York was the market to be working in um, and to then sort of transition over to be, you know, to have a physical presence over there? Sure. So early doors, to be honest, is when we wanted. We always said New York would be our first stop. Um, firstly, East Coast, so it's only a five hour time difference compared to an eight hour time difference to incubate in the UK. Um, secondly, it's my favourite city in the world, Barnum. Yeah. Um, and thirdly, one of your placements, in fact, you know, well, Samir Prince put his hand up and wanted to go over and, and launch uh, the office in New York. And um, we did kind of go through the, the contemplation with kind of different advice from different non-execs and that type of thing saying, are you sure New York, it's so expensive? Are you better to launch in Philly or Charlotte or Texas or somewhere like that? Yeah. Um, we kept coming back to the same thing of, of if we can make it in New York, we can make it anywhere, as yeah. to quote the old Frank Sinatra song. Um, but also from a talent perspective, great to attract um, as much great talent as possible in, in one of the best cities in the world. Fantastic. So how's the journey been to date? You know, from, you know, the minute Samir was over there, I know you guys got interrupted massively with the, the pandemic as well. And yeah. it took a, a huge... Uh, which would say a huge dive, but it was more of a dip in terms of like the progress that you wanted to make and as, as soon as you wanted to make it. But that's all out of the way now. And I think you've made up for that. Yeah, spot on. So um, I think it summarises it well. So we uh, we initially planned to open in, the, in New York around April, May 2020, which was brilliant timing. Yeah. Um, we were out there kind of end of Feb, start of March in 2020, um, signing on WeWorks, visiting clients and thinking, this is great. We're launching in New York. Um, little did we know like a few weeks later the whole world would be shut down and uh, I knew yeah. your plans would be on the back burner for a little bit but that gave us a really good incubation time in the UK um, where the guys stuck with it initially it was a three months work the US market let's see how you get on then we'll be out there in no time uh, that turned into six months to 12 months to 18 months as the kind of pandemic never seemed to to give up yeah. um, but it actually put us in a stronger place where more and more people saw Samir's vision and what he wanted to do in New York and where the business was going, saw the opportunity. And we ended up launching it with five of our leaders from the UK going out there rather than kind of just the one that was the original plan. Yeah, fantastic. At what point, I mean, from a business owner's perspective, what did you, uh, when people in the business put their hands up and said, I want to go over there, can I ask, like, how do you measure it to the point of where you are happy to invest in those people to get there? Because a lot of businesses kind of do it. Okay, well, look, you know, we'll target do it on a target based aspect. Um, we'll just send you over there because you want to go there. Like, how do you? How do they justify it? Sure, great question. So, um, the five that we had, it was pretty much no brainers to be honest. Where I don't think as a as a business owner, we were, we weren't put in a difficult position where somebody puts their hand up, really wants to go, is not quite capable of going. If that yeah. makes sense. Um, the five fully believed in them. It's a hundred percent like this is a no-brainer. They're all five of them were already leading teams in the business. All five of them had either been top biller or one of them was current top biller uh, in the UK business. And from there's two from London, three from our Nottingham office, but they all had that genuine friendship amongst the five of them as well. So could lean on each other when like they're moving their lives across the world, yeah. dealing with all the kind of personal admin type stuff that comes with kind of relocating to the states um and it made it a really easy decision for us we have it's then led to the success that they've launched the us business with it's then led to more and more in the uk operation saying i want to put my hand up and i want to do the us market and the thing for us is less of a capability issue because 
most of them are capable and they're doing good numbers in the UK. Yeah. It's more of a, have you properly considered this? Have you seriously thought about how that's going to impact your life of moving to the US? Yeah. Rather than, I think everybody loves the idea of a pub talk. Would you like to go and move to New York? Yeah, of course I would. It'd be an amazing experience. But then it's the the actual having those conversations of how's that going to affect your life, your partner, your sport situation, if you're involved in like a local sporting team, seeing your mates regularly, all of that type of thing. If the opportunity yeah. still outweighs that, amazing. Let's let's work to, together to kind of achieve that dream. Yeah, I think, I mean, for, speaking firsthand from doing Wet to Rec, you know, we speak to multiple candidates that want to go there. But as soon as you say, have you ever been? No. Um, you should go. Have you been there outside of a four-day weekend trip with your missus? No, you should probably go and do a bit more over there. You know, have you got a mortgage? You've got a car and, you know, you're tied into. There's so many elements and aspects that they needs to be considered. So, yeah, you're right. You know, there's a lot there to it. But one thing I, I wanted to touch on, which kind of correlates what you were just talking about, Forsyth Barnes has got, is, is got an incredible culture as a business as a whole. So, you know, for you, you're very fortunate that they took that with them over to the States to be able to mirror that, which is so rare for a lot of businesses. Because I wanted to ask you, you know, how did you um, get the same or how are you planning to have the same culture that you do here as over there? Um, we're really fortunate with that. With the, the five who were in the business, not only were the great builders and already leaders, I'd say they were cultural architects of, of the UK business already. So there was yeah. no doubt whatsoever in them launching the US business. Um, great people, first and foremost, so people like the, the American team that we've brought into the business want to work for them, are invigorated and excited to work for them. And you know the culture out there. It's yes, it's going to be hard work because you're launching an international business, but it's going to be a lot of fun at the same time. Yeah. And every single time that we go out to that office, we feel that sense of fun, energy, as well as people rolling their sleeves up and getting a, a hard work, the hard work done, um, they have they seem to have a right laugh with it at the same time. Absolutely. Have they faced any real challenges? Have you seen them face any challenges since they've settled over there that has stood out that you've managed to, you know, I suppose have a solution and correct and have learned from? Yeah, I think um, all five of them, to be honest, had the, the the kind of personal elements at first where. Um, things that you don't really account for where like they're setting up a social security setting up a bank account setting up a mobile phone bill when you've got no credit in the US for example um, there's a lot of things like that to take care of and there's more and more life admin I'd say than they, they initially anticipated Yeah, um, I think it worked really well for the five of them because like I say they are a close bonded unit and it's paved the way for whoever goes over next to kind of learn from what I went through and, and kind of a path well trodden now. Um, but each of them had like different things with landlords, with rent situations, with yeah. even little things. One of them uh, moved out to uh, Jersey City rather than living in Manhattan. Um, yeah. And somebody made him aware that it's a different tax situation for if they were to work from home, for example, because it's a different state. Yeah. Like, what? Like, how, how would you know that? Yeah, uh, it's like it's across the river. Um, it's a shorter commute than somebody who comes in from like the Upper East Side. Yeah. Um, so it's things like that that they, they kind of needed to get their head around and find their local gym spot, find their local uh, food spots and all of that type of thing were more the challenges than the work side of things. I think from a work perspective, they've been incubating over here. They'd already had good client relationships, good candidate relationships, that yeah. type of thing um, from incubating it. So, I mean, ultimately, that's been a case of having to lean on you and the operational side of the business to really get them where they needed to get to, um, which I think every company has the same challenges, if you like, you know, when they're moving people over there, like it's just getting it all figured out. Um, but once, I guess, once a month or two has been and gone, it, uh, it, it does, you know, work itself out to the point of, look, where they are now, um, okay. which goes to the next part. So ultimately... Where is the business at currently, you know, size wise plans, you know, how have you found the growth of, you know, the business over there and uh, the market itself? Sure. So the market's been great for us uh, over in the US and um, big advocate for the US market. And um, everything is a lot more expensive as, as kind of well documented, but the fees are a lot higher. The the thing that sticks out for me is how people treat, treat recruiters and treat staffing firms where, uh, we work with one global business, both sides of the pond, and when we work with, with them in the UK, they get good value for money, they get good service, but you know there's a little bit part of them that 
and it's a little bit reluctant about paying a, a sizable fee. Whereas yeah. exactly the same business on the other side of the pond in the US, they're excited to go out and tell their colleagues and tell the partners, I've just appointed Foresight Farms to lead the search for me. They're going to deliver this number of candidates. They've got this focus on DEI. And, yeah. and they're actually advocating for us the job that we're doing out there, um, which is, has been great for us. Um, yeah. The average fees and everything are really strong. And it's only kind of reinvigorated how much stronger we've got in the US market. So yeah. we, to give you a picture of where we're up to at the minute, with three global offices, two in the UK and one in America and New York. Yeah. The next stop for us is the fourth office will be in the US. Um, we'd initially planned on LA to cover the clients on the West Coast. Um, yeah. We've already seen to have picked up more clients in San Francisco than in LA. I was about to say, market. yeah. So there's already talk of whether it would definitely be the West Coast. It's whether we land in San Fran or land in LA. But um, I was in San Fran just before Christmas with clients. Um, Samir and Rahil are there next month in LA yeah. meeting clients. So we're already kind of got one finger on, on looking ahead of, uh, of the next time in the West Coast. Yeah, it's much of a muchness whether you're in LA or San Fran from a cost perspective as a business owner. Like it's just equivalent. You know, it's expensive in San Fran is expensive in LA, you know, but the opportunity over there is, you know, greater. And a lot of businesses, if you're in the East Coast, you're naturally going to pick up business on the West Coast and your clients are going to have both sides, you know, on, on the coverage aspect. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's a good natural move where you end up, obviously, either or is really cool places. Um, but it's exciting for the, for you guys as a, as a company. Um, what, where are you at growth-wise as a business in the States at the minute? And how have you found that part of, of the business in itself? You know, finding talent in the US, you know, finding the, you know, the people that fit the culture of the business and work well with the team? Yeah, I think um, there's some great talent over in the US, um, but I think we found the interview process slightly more challenging than we have in the UK, to be honest. I think mm -hmm. everybody comes straight out of college with um, great training on how to interview and how to position themselves and how to sell themselves, um, which we don't get as much of in the UK. I think it's actually something that should be introduced into like the UK university and school system, personally. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's an amazing skill to have. Um, but what that means, I suppose, for us as employers is we've um, we've got to go through a few more candidates to make sure we yes. find the really, really good ones that are really going to add value. Yeah. Um, really pleased with the team we've got out in New York at the minute. Um, the thing that we're really looking for is, as well as somebody being a really good contributor to Billings, uh, wants me to, to add to that culture, but then we're also looking for future leaders as well, where if we, we plan to open on the West Coast, we want some to leave a really good legacy management team behind in New York so that some of the team can go over and launch yeah. in the West Coast and we can kind of take that culture with us again, um, which means we need to hire the right people early doors who are going to be yeah. kind of leading teams in the future. Something you may or may not be able to answer, but do you find that when employing, because you mentioned on, you know, on the on the younger junior talent, if you like, um, those that have just come out of college or, you know, you know, whichever background they may have come from, they they talk a good game, they interview extremely well, but yeah. a lot of the people that are in New York want to work in New York, but there's a difference of them wanting to be one of them is an A is a worker, and B is those that actually want to work and earn the money. And not, you know, worry about the facade of being in New York City in itself. Does that make sense? So, have you found that? Yeah, a hundred percent. I think if you'd have asked me that question before we'd have landed in New York, yeah. I would have said, "Don't know what you're talking about." That that question really, really resonates with me. So we see that yeah. all of the time, and that's one of the things that we try and distinguish between when we're interviewing people because there's it's, a lot. It's of one of the biggest challenges that a lot of business owners in the US have you know and ultimately it's just they don't, they don't know how to get away from it and around it it's a very hit and miss kind of market in some instances um but if you get someone who's born and bred in new york that family is in new york and there's there's a whole different kind of persona on the, in their background then those are those kind of recruiters in my opinion this is um tend to be a lot a lot more uh in dedicated integrated into the the business and the money making aspect if they've been over from, if they're from Texas, North Carolina, Atlanta, and they're living in New York and they've kind of got that lifestyle, they're very different. To, it's a very different kind of person. I mean, that's yeah. just what I would say. No, I see. You. I think there's parallels to run with London as well, where Raheel and I both moved to London for work after uni. Um, 
but then there's obviously people who are, are kind of commuting in from the home counties at that point as well. And I think yeah. there's different motivations with people there as well that we still um, have to try and get under the skin of when we're interviewing for our London office as well. Yeah, fine. So what, where, where I guess, do you see from, I know you've mentioned obviously the West Coast and you've got the East Coast set up. Where do you see the differences in market? I know you mentioned about the client side, you know, being an advocate for the business and helping you guys get more um, coming through. How have you found the business development um, over in the States against the UK? Um, slightly different um, in the sense of in the UK, we do a lot more um, what I would call filling jobs where we're pitching yeah. retainers or winning retained business and then um, servicing those retained clients. In the US, we still do most of our work on a retained basis, but it tends to be that we're taking a candidate out to market to place the candidate more in the US to kind of open the door initially, prove yeah. the, the kind of value that you can add with said candidate, and then on the back of that, to winning projects and winning retained assignments and that type of thing. So wow. slightly different BD approach, but the core of, of what we do as a, um, as a talent partner is still exactly the same that we do in the, the UK. We yeah. try not to kind of make too many allowances for the US market um, where we look at what's made us successful in the UK and then and then kind of taking that out to the US. Fine, I'm with you. Okay, fine. So I guess from your side as well, you go over there. How often are you in the States yourself? So once a month. Um, so wow. I go every month at the minute, yeah. Um, I was there last... Not willing to move there? I would love to, 10 years ago, but um, we're settled now where we are, great family unit, um, yeah. kids at school, and um, yeah, I think pre-kids, I'd have absolutely loved to chop yeah. somebody's hand off for the opportunity to go out there, um, but yeah, I think whilst we're still kind of getting everything off the ground, um, we're still there, I go once a month, I was there last week, uh, I'm back out the week commencing the 13th of Feb, wow. um, just in time for the Super Bowl the night before. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, uh, out every month from there. But I, I love it out there. Do you think it's important as as one of the you know business owners to be physically present in the States, you know, with the team and to assist with the growth and what's going on over there? Or do you think you could do it as much as you would over here? Yeah, I, th I think so. So I think the, the biggest thing is more breaking bread with people, um, the cultural side of things that you're picking up. Like the, the guys that we've sent over to leave the office know what they're doing from a recruitment perspective. They're building a yeah. great culture, they're building a great team. I think the biggest impact that we play when we go over there is more um, meeting the people, making sure they feel part of a global business, that they're not just a siloed office on the other side of the world, that they're, they're fully part of our global operation. Um, and reconfirming with them the opportunity that's in front of them, that if they want to go and open the office in LA, San Francisco, wherever it is, yeah. look at what Samir's achieved, look at what Grant's achieved, Benji, Kirsch, Tom, those type of people, the opportunity is there for you as well, for the new people coming into the business. Um, yeah, and I also, when I'm at, when I'm in the UK, I don't see as many clients, roles become a bit more operational as we've grown, whereas in the US, I love going out and seeing clients as much as possible. So, um, kind of tend to, to kind of get involved in as much of the clients. Yeah, I've well. heard this so much, you know, the amount of meetings that are face-to-face -face in the US as opposed to those in the UK, like it's just so much of an enjoyment and it's welcomed a lot more. They'd rather go for a coffee with you in the US than, you know, knowing that they may not give you any business yet, but they're yeah. very happy to keep the networking going. Whereas in London, I feel like, or in the UK, um, it's closed doors, you know, barriers to entry. And it's kind of like, well, yeah, well, why should I meet you? You know, and it's kind of, it, that's kind of what I've been seeing or been told it's like. 100%. And I think it's one of the benefits of New York as well, where most execs will roll in and out of New York at least once a year from the US yeah. um, for different conferences and meetings. So whenever they're there, it's a case of meeting up, taking them for a coffee, for a drink, for lunch, whatever it might be, uh, and spending some face time with them. Brilliant. Any last words of wisdom to those going over there, that are, you know, planning to get their business set up in the States, whether it's New York or West Coast or anywhere else? I uh, don't know about words of wisdom, but I'd say um, first thing, do it. If you're thinking about it, the market's great out here, so do it. But yeah. then the second bit to, to kind of feed into that is whatever you're thinking it's going to cost, double it. Yeah. Uh, and probably, and then some more. Um yeah. To, to get things off the ground properly. Um, but it's a great market, great opportunity. Um, and yeah, I think it's made us more appealing as a global business as well by having a New York office. 
it's enabled us to attract better talent in London, Nottingham and outgrow those offices as well. Yeah, it definitely separates, you know, a lot of the businesses that have got that international exposure. Um, and from a financial financial perspective, I don't think businesses really see a real return on their investment for at least for maybe a year and a half, two years, you know, in my opinion, from being out there. Um, is that how you've seen it? Um, I wouldn't go that far. Like, yeah. we, we, I think we were quite fortunate to incubate in the UK for a long time, which meant that we could turn it into a profitable yeah. operation yeah. sooner. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's very costly. Everything costs out there, as you know. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, whatever you're budgeting, double it. Yeah, I think those that are even trying to get over to Texas, Miami, trying to save a few quid here and there, I think they, and I've mentioned this many times, I think they'll come up with the same challenges, thinking that it's a little bit more cheap. They might save a couple of grand here and there, but it's still costly as a, as a place to be, regardless of where you are in the States. Um, you know, so... Look, um, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much again. Um, it's fantastic things going on with the business over in, you know, UK and US. You know, for those that follow um, Forsyth Barnes, you know, or, or don't, you know, you'll see it for yourselves. Um, so check them out. You know, there's so much stuff on their socials that are going out there. Just gives them a prime you know, example of who they are as a business. Um, if anyone's got any questions, feel free to reach out to myself. Um, I'll introduce you over to Scott. If you want to talk to Scott directly, you'll be tagged on everything that goes out on socials anyway. Um, Scott, wish you the best of luck with everything. Um, you know, lovely, you know, to speak to you again. Hopefully we can you know, keep in touch as well and get things, uh, yeah, I suppose get things moving for the West Coast for you as well. Sounds a plan. Appreciate you having me, Elliot. Pleasure.